Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the synthesis and secretion of insulin. Okay, so we've just discussed the structure of insulin. We now want to see how it's synthesized. Okay, so let's say we're talking about the cytoplasm of our beta cell of the iris of Langerhans. And basically what happens is you create the mRNA for your insulin protein. Now, basically, as I said in the previous video, the B chain and the A chain are not two separate proteins, okay? They are made from the same protein. So, basically, there is one gene for insulin, and it will be transcribed into a piece of mRNA, which is what uh, this line here is meant to represent. This is the mRNA uh, that we're going to use to translate into a protein which we will use to make insulin. We'll get one huge, great protein, and we'll then chop this protein up and get an A chain and a B chain and then join them back together in a different way, i.e. through these disulfide bonds. So, here we have the mRNA. Basically, it will then be translated by a ribosome. So let's say this is a ribosome, okay? And what will happen is the ribosome uh, will uh, synthesize the polypeptide that is uh, coded for by the mRNA. And basically, it will make one huge protein. And this huge protein that it's about to make is what's called pre-pro-insulin. So the first polypeptide that you make um, in the synthesis of insulin is something known as pre-pro-insulin. Okay, now, whilst pre-pro-insulin is still being translated, what will happen is the process will be, um, will be halted for a moment, and the reason is uh, that a um, co-translational a process is going to occur, basically. It's going to target it to the ER. So pre-pro-insulin is going to be targeted to the ER, and this is going to occur co-translationally. Co-translationally, that's a difficult word to say. Uh, so basically, whilst you're still translating the pre-pro-insulin, what's going to happen is this um, pre-pro-insulin is going to be targeted into the ER. Now, what tells uh, the cellular machinery to target a protein that is in the process of translation to be targeted to the ER membrane? Well, basically, you have to have what's known as a signal sequence. So, right at the amino terminus of the protein that's just been translated, there will be a specific combination of amino acids, basically, and this will be called a signal sequence. Okay, and what's going to happen is that a protein in the cytoplasm of the cell will recognize and bind to this signal sequence. So let's show this here. Uh, so we've got a little protein here binding to the signal sequence. And this little protein that binds to the signal sequence is what is known as a signal recognition particle. And for short, signal recognition particle is often abbreviated to SRP. Okay, so SARP. So this is a signal recognition particle, or an SRP. So the SRP will bind over the signal sequence, and now what's going to happen is the translation is going to be temporarily halted. So you're not going to make any more polypeptide. The mRNA has not been fully read yet. You have not synthesized the full... Um, piece of pre-pro insulin, but at the moment translation is going to be halted. You'll continue it later. Okay, and what's going to happen is this signal recognition particle is going to bind to a receptor on the uh, ER membrane. So let's put the ER membrane here. So basically at the moment this entire structure here is within the cytoplasm. You want to put it inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. Okay, uh, so let me just remind you of your intracellular organelles. So, where should I draw this? I'll draw it down here. Okay, so if this is a, a cell, you have certain important intracellular organelles. Now, probably the most famous is the nucleus. Okay, this is where the DNA is kept. Uh, but another really important intracellular organelle is the endoplasmic reticulum, okay? And this is membrane-bound, just like the nucleus. The nucleus has a membrane around it, uh, and the endoplasmic reticulum has a membrane around it. And this membrane is, again, a lipid bilayer, just like uh, the membrane that surrounds the cell, basically. 
Okay, and often proteins will be targeted into the endoplasmic reticulum lumen, which is this space inside the endoplasmic reticulum membrane, if they're going to be secreted from the cell. And then what generally happens is they will move from the endoplasmic reticulum into another intracellular organelle, which I'll show here, which is a bunch of flattened, stacked, uh, membrane-bound structures known as cisternae. Okay, and this is known as the Golgi apparatus. Okay, so here is the Golgi apparatus. So often what will happen is proteins which are going to be secreted from the cell will first go into uh, the lumen of the ER. There they will be folded and modified in all the ways that they're going to be. Then they will be sent to the Golgi apparatus and occasionally a few other modifications can occur in the Golgi apparatus. And then what will happen is the Golgi apparatus will then put them into a secretory vesicle which can then be secreted from the uh, plasma membrane. Okay, right. So, here is the lipid bilayer of the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, there is an important structure within the lipid bilayer of the endoplasmic reticulum, and this is going to help uh, proteins get from the cytoplasm into the ER lumen, and this is what's known as a translocon. Okay, so this structure here, which is going to help this um, pre-pro-insulin get through the ER membrane, this is known as a translocon. And translocons are associated in the ER membrane with another protein, which I'll draw here. Okay, and this other protein is a signal recognition particle receptor. So these two are physically linked, basically. Okay, so this is a signal recognition particle receptor, an SRP receptor. Okay, so what's going to happen is our signal recognition particle is bound to the signal sequence of the uh, beginning of the pre-pro insulin. This has halted translation. What will now happen is this signal recognition particle will bind to the signal recognition particle receptor. So let's put it in here. So it's bound there. And of course, it will still have the signal sequence bound to it. So I'll put this in in pink here. Okay. And then uh, the rest of the polypeptide will be in the ribosome here. And then of also you'll have the mRNA coming along as well. That will still be tagged along. Okay, so the whole thing will be translocated to the ER membrane like this because the signal recognition particle will bind to the signal recognition particle receptor. Now what happens is that... Uh, the signal sequence is transferred from the signal recognition particle, which is bound to the signal recognition particle receptor, onto the translocon. So what's going to happen now is that it's going to evolve into a picture that looks like this. Okay, so here is the translocon. Okay. And now the signal recognition particle receptor is no longer important in the process, so I won't draw it anymore. Okay, so here is the translocon. And then what will happen is the signal sequence will now be bound to the translocon. So it's cleaved off the signal recognition particle, or it's been, ex it's been transferred from the signal recognition particle onto the translocon. And then what will happen is here's the rest of the polypeptide. Here's the ribosome with the mRNA going through it. Okay, right, so let me colour in bits again. So here is the signal sequence, and I'm sorry that it's been bumped up hugely from my little dot up there, but uh, the colours hopefully illustrate what has happened. The signal sequence has been transferred from the signal recognition particle onto the translocon, and the signal recognition particle and the signal recognition particle receptor are no longer important. They're not going to play any further part. Okay, right. Now, once you've got this situation, what will happen is the ribosome will continue translation, basically. Translation will be resumed, and you will synthesize the rest of this protein. And what will happen is, as you're synthesizing it, it will basically be fed through this tube in the translocon into the ER lumen over here. So this is the ER lumen down here, whereas currently where the ribosome is, this side is the cytoplasm. Okay, so... What will then happen is you'll synthesize the rest of the protein and the rest of it will end up in the ER lumen. So what will happen is the situation will evolve into this. So again, here is the lipid bilayer of the ER membrane. Here is the translocon here. Okay. Then what you have is uh, the signal sequence here. Okay. 
and then the rest of the polypeptide will now be here. Okay, so the signal sequence is currently still bound to the translocon. Next, what will happen is this, the rest of this polypeptide will now fold up. So this whole thing, the signal sequence with the rest of the polypeptide, this entire thing is what is now called pre-pro-insulin. And what's now going to happen is the pre-pro-insulin, which is in the ER lumen, is going to fold up. So let me show you how it's going to fold up. Okay, so again, here is the lipid bilayer of the ER membrane. Here is the translocon here. Okay, uh, here is the signal sequence. And now what's going to happen is you're going to have something that looks kind of like this. So it's going to fold up like this. And this basically shows us the beginnings of the B chain and the alpha chain because these bonds that are holding it fold up, fold up in this way, um, those are the same disulfide bonds as we have in the final structure up here. So let me now add a bit of colour on here to show you what's going to happen. So basically we have the signal sequence here which is bound to the translocon. We then have the portion that will become the B chain here, okay? And we have the bit that will become the A chain here. Okay, and this intervening portion that's between the B chain and the A chain, that's known as the C peptide, basically. So that's how you're going to produce C peptide when you produce insulin, because it's this bit between the A and the B chain. But remember, the pre-pro-insulin is the name for the signal sequence in pink here, the B chain in green here, the C peptide, which I've left colourless, uh, and then uh, the A chain here. That The whole thing is pre-pro-insulin. Now, what's going to happen, basically, is that an enzyme is going to come along here. So let me draw this enzyme here. Okay, and this enzyme is going to be a protease, and it's going to cut the signal sequence off. So this is a protease here. And it's going to come in, and it's going to cut this, uh, well, it's going to cut the polypeptide between the signal sequence and the uh, B chain. So it's going to break a peptide bond, and hence it's going to cut off the B chain with the C peptide and the A chain from the signal sequence. So it's going to cut across here, basically. And what you're going to get is a molecule that now looks like this, okay, which is currently in the ER membrane. So we've got these disulfide bonds here. We've got the B chain in green here. We've got the A chain in blue here, okay. And we have no signal sequence anymore. So this is not pre-pro-insulin anymore because we've got rid of the signal sequence. And remember, to be pro, sorry, to be pre-pro-insulin, you needed the signal sequence, the B chain, the C peptide, and the A chain. It was the entire thing, basically. This thing, once we've cleaved the signal sequence off, is what is known as pro-insulin. So we're not at insulin yet. Insulin will be once we've removed the C-peptide, but at the moment we're at pro-insulin. Okay, so this is how you go from pre-pro-insulin to pro-insulin. Now, the classical pathway, uh, what was classically thought was that the pro-insulin must now be processed to insulin in the ER membrane, and then the insulin will be sent to the Golgi apparatus, and then the Golgi apparatus will send it on into a secretory vesicle. Because the classical sort of understanding of secretory pathways was that the protein was really fully processed in the ER lumen, and then it was sent into the Golgi to be packaged into a vesicle, and then it would go off in its vesicle. However, what has emerged is that insulin does not um, follow that classical secretory pathway. Instead, this pro-insulin goes into the Golgi apparatus as it is. So you're not going to finish the processing yet. Um, you're not going to turn the pro-insulin into insulin yet. It's going to be sent from the ER lumen into the Golgi apparatus. It's going to go from the ER lumen into the Golgi, and then the Golgi will package it into a secretory vesicle. And then, in the secretory vesicle, what will happen is the pro-insulin will be broken down into uh, insulin and then the C-peptides. So let me show this on the other side. Okay, so basically what you'll have, let me just get this nice and straight, okay. So you'll have a secretory vesicle here. So this is supposed to represent a membrane-bound secretory vesicle. 
okay, that's currently within the cytoplasm but later can be um, secreted from the cell. Okay, and basically you you load these secretory vesicles with the pro-insulin. So here is the pro-insulin. So let me put it in colour again so that we can recognise it nice and easily. So here is our B chain in green. Here is our A chain in blue. And we have the C peptide in between the B chain and the A chain. Okay? So we have our pro-insulin, which is what this is called, remember. And basically, in the secretory vesicles, there are then... There is then an enzyme, a protease enzyme. So let's have this protease enzyme here. And of course, there won't just be one of them. There'll be many uh, copies of this protease enzyme. So this, again, is a protease. And basically, what it's going to do is it's going to break uh, the peptide bonds in two places. It's going to break a peptide bond here between the B chain and the C peptide. And it's also going to break a bond here between the C peptide and the A chain. And hence, what it's going to produce then is you've got the final insulin here, which is the B chain plus the A chain linked by these two disulfide bonds. So here is the A chain in blue. Here is the B chain in green. Okay, and then you're also going to produce this C peptide, which was the intermediate bit here. And I'll finally give this a color. I think I'll color it in orange. Okay, so here is C peptide. So in the vesicles which contain the insulin, which is over here, you will also have C peptide. So when you secrete insulin, when you secrete these vesicles containing insulin, you will also be secreting C peptide. Okay, right. So now that we've discussed the synthesis of insulin, and we've discussed also the storage, because the insulin will just be stored in this secretory vesicle like so until it's time for it to be secreted, uh, let's now discuss the secretion. But we'll do that in the next video.